you mommies to be if you are watching this video you're probably somewhere around the ninth week of your pregnancy and whether this be your first pregnancy or your fifth you probably have a lot of questions so in this video i'm going to be going over everything you need to know about your pregnancy during this week of your pregnancy but first my name is diana i'm a physician assistant specializing in women's health and gynecology i'm a mommy to three and like you i have one on the way you are watching in the pink and if you're new here in the pink means in good health and spirits so if you like being healthy and happy click the subscribe button because you're in the right place So in this video, we're going to be talking about baby development, what changes your body is going through, what you might be feeling like, what to expect at your next doctor's appointment, what will help you to become more comfortable. Basically, everything that you need to be thinking about right now, we're going to be talking about right now. So stick around because you don't want to miss this. So at nine weeks, you can check month two off your calendar because you are now in month three of your pregnancy. Now you're still in your first trimester and you have about 31 weeks left to go. For your little one, your baby is starting to look more and more like a little human. The facial features are starting to become more developed and the ears are starting to develop as well. A few weeks ago, I mentioned that the spinal cord has developed a little tail, but by now, this spinal cord tail has disappeared. The muscles are starting to develop, but will still be another month or two before you start to feel any kicks. The baby is about an inch now and is about the size of an olive. The head is starting to straighten out and is starting to develop little fingers and toes. On ultrasound, the gestational sac, which is the fluid the embryo is growing in, is getting bigger due to the increased amniotic fluid. The baby is getting bigger as well and you can visibly see the heart beating and hear it through the ultrasound. But most of the time, it's too early to hear the heartbeat on a Doppler on top of the stomach. It's still too early to need maternity pants and you probably aren't really showing yet, but your clothes are starting to feel a little bit tight, so it's okay to loosen up the belt. As for you, your uterus is about the size of a grapefruit. This is one of the reasons why you might be feeling like you have to urinate more often, like a lot more often. And this is totally normal, but definitely annoying. And it's due to the increased hormone called HCG, which is the same hormone that is detected when you get a positive pregnancy test. Well, one of the things that this hormone does is it triggers an increased amount of blood flow to the pelvis, which is great for your developing baby, but it's not so great for how often you have to pee. Also, as your uterus grows, it puts more pressure on your bladder, making it less able to hold as much pee. And when you get further along, sometimes your baby will kick you right in the bladder, causing you to have to make a quick, unexpected visit to the bathroom. You might be tempted to drink less water, so you don't have to run to the bathroom quite as often, but I definitely do not recommend this. Rather the opposite, you should choose to drink more water and just adjust to knowing that you're gonna have to frequent the bathroom more often. To help you through this, when you are urinating, try leaning forward. Sometimes that position helps you to empty your bladder more fully. After you urinate, just stick around in the toilet for a few minutes longer. Sometimes you'll pee again, fully emptying your bladder. And this will help you to keep from feeling like you have to pee again like in 15 minutes. But sometimes that happens anyways. When you do have to pee, as annoying as it is, just go. It doesn't do anybody any good to be doing the pee pee dance when you're trying to make dinner. Also, if you're about to leave the house or office for something, just go ahead and urinate. Even if you don't think that you have to, chances are you'll pee once you sit down and that might help you to avoid an extra trip to the bathroom while you are out running errands. We call this timed voiding, which means you are urinating when you know that you should, even if you don't feel an urgency yet. But on that same note, I highly recommend urinating before you work out. Again, even if you don't feel like you have to, trust me on this, you'll thank me. This is especially true if you're a runner, but even if you pee right before you go running or walking, plan your route to take you somewhere near a bathroom that you can use along the way. So make sure that you pass like a grocery store or a gas station or a library or whatever so that you can stop when you need to. If you don't, well, I'll just say that I've had to call my husband more than one time to come get me when out on a run or a walk because I need to use the bathroom and I am nowhere near a toilet. Another option is just to make short loops around your home so that you are easily near your own restroom. A few other tips to help. While caffeine in moderation is okay to drink, it is a mild diuretic, which means that it will make you pee more often. Cutting back may help you to pee less. 
Also try not to drink too much right before bed. This might help you to not have to urinate too much in the middle of the night. If you notice that your urine looks really dark, that is a sign that you're not drinking enough and that you need to drink more water. If your urine is a light yellow color, that's a good sign that you are getting enough water. Now just as a reminder, if you notice that not only do you not have to pee more often, but that it burns when you pee, that could be a sign of a urinary infection. So you should call your OB if you notice burning or pain with urination. Even more serious is if you have pain with urination, low back pain, fever, chills, and body aches. This is a sign of a kidney infection, and if that happens, you should call up your doctor right away. So on ultrasound, the gestational sac, which is the fluid the embryo is growing in, is getting bigger due to the increased amount of amniotic fluid. The baby is getting bigger as well, and you can visibly see the heart beating and can hear it through the ultrasound. But most of the time, it's a little bit too early to hear the heartbeat on the Doppler on top of the stomach. As for you, it's still too early to need maternity pants and you probably aren't showing yet, but your clothes are probably starting to feel a little bit tighter. It's okay to loosen up the belt. Your uterus, like I mentioned before, is about the size of a grapefruit and is now above the symphysis bone. In fact, something fun that you can do now is actually fill your uterus. It's barely big enough now, so if you want to try this, lie down on a bed and bend your knees a little and place a pillow under your knees. Find your symphysis bone or the pelvic bone and push down so you can feel it. Then slowly move up towards your belly button. There's a firmness there, but you might not really recognize it as a firmness yet, but that's okay. Keep slowly moving up as you push on your tummy. After an inch or two, you're going to notice a drop off where the firmness disappears. This is the top of your uterus, where it ends. Obviously the top of my uterus is much higher because I'm further along, but it feels the same at nine weeks, just lower and a little bit deeper and smaller. Now, if you move back down, you will fill it again. It will become more obvious the further along you are, but it's fun to be able to fill it for yourself, even if you can't see it. If you can't fill it today, no worries. It's difficult to fill this early. Give it another few weeks and eventually it's gonna become very obvious. Now I talk a lot about morning sickness and nausea and vomiting in weeks seven and eight video. So if you didn't see that, be sure to check that out. I'll put that in the video description down below. And I've also talked about breast changes that you're gonna experience in earlier videos. But to recap, you are gonna notice breast changes, specifically that they are getting bigger and that you are getting darker rings around your nipples. You'll also notice that your breasts become more tender. All of this is totally normal. The advice that I can give you is go ahead and invest in new bras. You'll be glad you did. Your breasts aren't gonna get smaller anytime soon and you will be so much more comfortable with the added support and good fit of a bra that is the right size for you right now. I'll put a link to some good pregnancy and breastfeeding bras in the description down below. But for now, let's talk a little bit about sex. So sex is totally fine during your pregnancy. There are a few circumstances where your OB might tell you otherwise, but if you are having a normal pregnancy without any complications, feel free to engage. It won't hurt you or the baby. In fact, there are a few changes that might make things better. My husband might kill me for telling you this story, but with my first pregnancy, I felt like my breasts got considerably bigger, like literally overnight somewhere around eight or nine weeks of my pregnancy. And one morning I was getting out of the shower and it was suddenly very obvious to him as well. And I kid you not, when he saw me, his eyes got like three times bigger and his lips and face elongated into one of those cartoon dogs. And he, well, let's just say he definitely noticed. As for you, some changes make things much better for you as well. As I mentioned earlier about the increased HCG hormone that triggers an increase of blood supply to your pelvis, so this increase in blood supply can make sex more pleasurable for you and it can make orgasms easier. This increased blood supply to your pelvis means increased blood supply to your genitals as well, which causes increased lubrication. So do not feel like you need to hold back if you want to. Enjoy that part of your relationship with your partner. On the downside, however, the first trimester can make you feel so tired. If you feel like you are dragging every second of the day, that is totally normal. And if you need to take a nap as soon as you get home from work, take a nap. If you need to feel like you need to rest by 10 a.m., if your schedule allows for it, do it. Go to bed an hour early or three hours early if you need to and get those much needed Z's. And don't feel bad about sleeping in if you can too. And the good news is the fatigue usually goes away after the first trimester. So in a few weeks, you should start to be feeling more like yourself again. The bad news, 
you start to feel tired again by the time you reach the third trimester. Simply because you are carrying a baby that's a lot bigger. But for now, just be kind to your body. It's working over time because girls, you are growing a human being inside you. Now, if you haven't seen your OB yet, I highly recommend that you get set up for your first appointment. I talked a lot about what to expect at your first OB appointment in week six video. So when you're done with this video, definitely go check that out. But I want to talk about what to expect with your upcoming appointment as far as screening for abnormalities. Now, there are different options for screenings available at different times during your pregnancy or you might choose not to do any type of screenings at all. That's totally fine too. Testing for abnormalities is entirely up to you. You aren't expected to do it, but it's okay if you do wanna do it. It's a matter of personal preference and beliefs and what you are comfortable with. There's no right answer on this. Now, that being said, it's a good idea for you to know what is available so that you can make an educated decision on what is right for you. Your OB might present a few different options depending on how far along you are. So don't rely on this video entirely to make your decision. I recommend that you talk to your OB and ask him or her any questions that you might have to help you make a good decision based upon what you both talked about. So some tests can check babies for medical conditions while they are in the womb. Others check the DNA for some genetic diseases. But if you see your OB before 14 weeks, you will probably be offered something called sequential screening. This test uses a combination of an ultrasound and blood tests, and it helps to determine the risk of genetic disorders like Down syndrome, trisomy 18, and spina bifida. So your doctor should bring this all up to you. So you can start thinking about this if this is something that you want to look into or not. Finally, let's go over some do's and don'ts during your pregnancy, but your OB will talk to you about this too. I'm just giving you some general information. So if your OB tells you something that is different than what I say, just do what your OB says, okay? Most OBs wanna see you at first around six to eight weeks. So if you haven't called your OB yet, like I told you, it's time to get on the phone and make an appointment. At your first appointment, your OB will wanna ask you a bunch of questions about your past medical history, your surgeries, your medications, and also your family history. If you haven't had one in a while, they will probably collect a pap test. You will also get lab work drawn, and these are called your prenatal labs. They are looking at your blood count, they look at your liver and kidney functions, your electrolytes, and they're checking for any STIs or sexually transmitted infections. And usually they'll check a urine test for an infection. So like I mentioned earlier, they're probably gonna go over things that you should and shouldn't do. So we're gonna talk about that right now. So first off, you wanna eat a well-balanced diet with lots of fruits and vegetables. Yes, you can and definitely should eat fish or at least fish supplements, but avoid shark, swordfish, and tuna steak. So fish that are large fish that eat other fish. Don't eat unpasteurized dairy foods or raw foods or undercooked meats. If you have a cat, let somebody else change the kitty litter. Cat litter can have a parasite that causes something called toxoplasmosis. This is a rare infection that can hurt your baby. A lot of women wonder if they can exercise and the answer is definitely yes. You can and should continue to exercise. You should avoid heavy weightlifting, but if you are already into heavy weightlifting, you need to talk to your OB about restrictions. Aerobic exercise is fine to do, but as a good rule, you wanna make sure that you don't get so winded that you can't carry on a conversation comfortably. You can also travel both by car and by airplane all the way up to about 36 weeks. When you are traveling, be sure to get up and walk around every hour to keep the circulation moving through your legs to help avoid blood clots. If you do travel, avoid traveling to areas at risk for Zika virus. The Zika virus is known to cause birth defects. As far as sex goes, we've talked about this already, it's totally fine. Unless something is going on during your pregnancy where your OB specifies otherwise. They might ask you to abstain if you are having bleeding or preterm labor, for example. Don't drink alcohol. Also, no tobacco or drugs. If you are struggling with these addictions, there is help. Talk to your doctor about resources to help you quit, please. There are over-the-counter medications that you can take, and that really is a whole video in itself, but the most frequent question that I get is pain relievers. So you can safely take Tylenol, but avoid NSAIDs, so like ibuprofen, and the brand name of that is Motrin, and avoid naproxen, which is also called Aleve. If you somehow injure your abdomen, like you fall, make sure to call your OB. But if you get a severe injury, like you get in a car accident, make sure to go to the ER. When you do get in the car, make sure to wear your seatbelt, but wear the lap bound low 
at your pelvis, not over your abdomen. In general, if you have any swelling in a leg, shortness of breath, pain, or bleeding, make sure to call your OB. I have a full video that goes into depth about the do's and don'ts of pregnancy. I'll link to that to the card above here that will give you even more information about this topic. Now, just as a reminder, this video is intended to be educational, but it is not intended to be a replacement for your regular OB. So if you have any questions, make sure that you talk about it with your OB. If you want to hear more about how to help with morning sickness, check out week eight. I really dive in deep talking about that. Also, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions you'd like me to address in a future video, put that in the comment section down below. And of course, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. In week 10, I'll be talking more about the first trimester testing that you need to be thinking about. So watch for that video coming up next week. Click on that video and I will see you over there.